My hair currently looks like the average code base that uses Redux. And if I had a dollar for every time someone asked me if they should learn Redux, then I'd actually have enough money to hire a decent developer to fix it. This is a cause that's very near and dear to my heart, so I decided to make my dreams a reality and code it up should I learn redux.netlify.app. How it works is you can pay $1 to unlock the answer of whether you should be learning Redux. Underneath the hood, when you click the button, it will run a series of deep neural nets that pipe into a machine learning model, which will then cross-reference against some if statements to analyze your browser history and determine whether you should be learning Redux. This takes a little while to run for the first time you click on the button, but it will cache the results after that for subsequent presses. So I already paid myself a dollar and I can show you guys the cache results for myself. I got a big fat no, and that's pretty much the main reason why I don't use Redux. Now the thing about machine learning is it's not always right. So what I wanna do in this video is discuss how I would use Redux, Recoil, Context, and just how I view state management and React in general. In the average React app, there's usually three types of state. And the most common one has to do with just fetching data and storing it from an API. And commonly, Redux is used for that. Redux is just a general state management library, so everyone implements this differently. But here's an example that is simple to just give you an idea. So we have a use effect hook, which will run after the first render and just dispatch an action to load some data from the API. And then once that is loaded in, it'll be stored in Redux and just passed to this component. Using Redux for this type of state reminds me a lot of making your own marinara sauce from scratch. If you're willing to put in the time and the effort and you're actually good at cooking, then the end results can actually be pretty good. But if you're just okay at cooking, or maybe you're just surrounded with a bunch of crappy sous chefs that have terrible taste buds and make it too salty, then you're just gonna be kind of left with a bowl of spaghetti code and some nasty marinara sauce on top. Now don't worry, I'm not about to suggest you go out and get yourself a jar of marinara sauce. I would never do that, that stuff is crap but I am gonna recommend you head over to your grandma's house who's got a giant pot of marinara sauce that she made all from scratch that is just sitting there waiting for you. She goes by a lot of names depending on the type of API you have. If you like GraphQL, some call her Apollo or Relay. If you like REST, she's known as React Query or SWR, but no matter what you call her, at the end of the day, you're gonna get a great tasting marinara sauce that is specifically designed for fetching and caching data from an API, and your grandma made the entire thing with fresh ingredients. I'm sure there's some applications that need like a custom setup, but just for the average React app, using a data fetching library that is specifically designed for this type of state compared to a general state management library is gonna save you a lot of time and effort and is what I would recommend using. The second type of state is what I call local state and it's pretty much any client side state that just one component or a few nearby components need access to. For example, you could have a checkbox that you can tick on and off to hide and show something in your UI. And for this, I like to handle it with just the built-in use state hook. And then of course, if things get more complex or you have some more complex state, there's also the use reducer hook. And of course, as the component evolves and just your requirements change, more components might need access to that state. And so you just lift it up to the highest level. And if the components that need the state are just nearby, you just pass it down as props. Otherwise, it's not really local state anymore and it goes into like the next category, which I consider global state. I put global in parentheses because it's not necessarily that this state is used across like your entire application. It just can be any state that you don't feel like passing props all the way down to or it just gets annoying to do that. For example, you might have a sidebar that sometimes you want to hide, but sometimes you want to show. And maybe the way that happens is there's like a button in the header and you press that. And so you want to be able to control the sidebar from the header over here, but then they're way far apart and they're very far in the component tree. For situations like this, I either like to use React Context or just whatever state management library I'm liking best at the moment. Currently, that happens to be Zustan because I don't have to wrap my entire React app in providers, which is kind of nice. But honestly, there's a lot of good options and just really comes down to whichever state management library you like better. And with this approach, you're not gonna be handling a lot of state at all with a state management library or React context. It's just gonna be like a little sprinkle on top. And then the majority of your state is gonna be handled by use state in a data fetching library. Now, some of you may have noticed I have yet to mention recoil, and that is for very good reason. 
I don't think recoil is very necessary in the average React application. I watched the video introducing recoil and I thought to myself, hmm, that is a really cool library. But that is also a library specifically designed for a Facebook problem. If I end up having a problem like that, then yeah, I'll give it a try. But until then, I just kind of have put it on the back burner. To circle back to the earlier question of whether you should learn Redux, I think if you can control the technologies you are using on a project, then there are better options, and I wouldn't learn Redux. But you just don't always have that luxury. Even though Redux has kind of fallen out of favor on social media, there's still a lot of companies that use it. And if you are a current React developer or you're planning on becoming one, you are probably going to encounter Redux somewhere in your career. And so you are probably going to be required to learn it at some point. Although I would recommend to procrastinate it as long as you can. Anyway, for those of you that end up using Redux anyway, I wish you the best of luck. Give Redux Toolkit and maybe Redux Query a try. Hopefully you don't get RSI from this. And remember, be very careful with Redux. You do not want your code base looking like this.